Godox has thrown their hat into the arena of on-camera monitors, a 5.5-inch 1080p IPS touchscreen display that is loaded with features to help you get the right framing, exposure, and sound. It takes 4K in and out, 3 LUT support, plus packed in with accessories and options. So, how does Godox's first entry stack up? Well, let's find out. Okay, today we're taking a look at the Godox GM55 on-camera monitor. Now, before we get into the details about the monitor, let's explain briefly why you would need a monitor. And, well, the reason is sort of in the name itself, to monitor yourself. While most cameras do have displays, some may not flip out for you to see yourself, and if it does flip out, it may be too small to really notice the details of the framing while you're recording. Especially if you're doing a vlog like this. Monitors naturally give you a bigger size, but also offer features you normally don't get in cameras, and this is where the GM55 really starts to set itself up as a valuable tool. Let's take a quick look at what you get. We take a look at the box, we can see how the screen supports a 1920 by 1080 full HD resolution, 4K HDMI in and out, 3D LUT monitoring, full touch screen, real-time monitoring, and a power in and out option. In the box, you get a dust cloth, cold shoe bracket, two HDMI cables, a standard HDMI to micro and standard HDMI to mini, literature, a very cool hood, and, oh yeah, well, let's not forget the monitor itself. The monitor is nice and solid and feels good and durable. It's made out of hard plastic though. We have our full HD IPS screen in the front, naturally, and on the top we can see our six function keys that can be customized. We have a quarter inch socket to mount microphones, recorders, cold shoes, or whatever you need that makes sense there for the size and accessibility. Moving on, a return button to move you back in your menus, our menu wheel that depresses as a button, and our power button on the side. On the other side, we have our standard HDMI 4K ports, in and out, and a headphone jack to monitor your audio. At the bottom, our SD card slot so we can load up our LUTs. Now remember, this is for LUTs only. This will not let you record video from the monitor. We also have our DC in and out, and probably the one thing I'm most excited about for this monitor is the camera control connection port, in which you need a separate camera control connector cable that I, as of this moment, don't have. On the back, we'll also have the option to power this through a Sony MP battery, which is awesome because no wires makes it even better. If you're new to this setup, it's super easy. Take the adapter and screw it onto the bottom and adjust. If you're going outside or in an overly bright area, you're going to want to put the hood on to block out glare. If not, well then, no worries. Just mount it on your camera and you're good to go. All right, let's do a walkthrough of the GM55 and we'll start from the top. And at the top, we have our six function buttons and already they're preset for function number one is our camera control. So if we have the camera control cord connected to this monitor, uh, we can control our, our camera through the monitor. Uh, function number two is our LUT switch. We just turned it on and we'll turn it off. And you would use your LUT switch, let's just say you're recording in log and obviously it'll come out a flat image. It'll show up on the monitor as a flat image. If you if you load in your LUT, it'll switch it to that Rec. 709 and you can display it properly uh, from your monitor. So that helps a lot. Uh, function three is our focus assist. So as you can see right here, we can switch our focus. Make sure everything's in focus. That, that's really helpful. Um, and then function four, we have our false color, definitely for getting really good exposure. Um, a lot of cameras don't have built-in false colors, so now you have that. And especially if you're starting off, that's a tremendous help to really get your exposure right. Uh, then we have our center marker on, which is that little cross here in the middle. You can turn that on and off. We'll leave it on. Uh, and then we have our safe marker, which can you turn it off. And you can adjust all of these from the from the menu. Now let's go deeper into our menu. We'll move over to our, our menu dial. And we just scroll and we can adjust our, bot our, our volume. And we depress it. It brings up our full menu. All right, so we've got our focus assist that we saw earlier, right? And we can just press the on button and then we can see it here. We can actually change the colors of our focus assist. Okay, for blue, yellow, and all that stuff. Okay. 
go back to red, we can turn that off. And then we go to false color, we can turn it on. And you can see how you have two modes of false color, whichever one you prefer. And each one, you've got a dial on the side uh, to tell you where you are as far as the reading is concerned. Okay, let's go back to our menu. Okay, and we'll turn that off. And we, of course, we have zebras to see where you're overexposed and you can change the values of what you're overexposed. Expose is uh, right now. I have nothing overexposed. Oh, there we go. The bar is kind of going off right there. All right, let's try that again. Our zebras. We can turn that off. Monochrome. You can choose one color to display. Oops, got to turn it on. There you go. So you have that. Pixel to pix pixel to pixel. You have that option. You can do an. Oops, let me turn it off. Image flip. You can flip your image if you like depending on if you, let's just say you're viewing the monitor a certain angle and you need to flip it around, uh, you can do that. You can, you have a zoom option, you can zoom in, you have different values you can play with. And of course you have your co camera control, you can switch that on or off. But of course we don't have the cord. And then you have your battery tip if you want your monitor, your camera battery thing going over here. Now, um, this thing eats up batteries really fast. I just put in a brand new charge battery and we're already at three bars left. So this thing eats it up really fast. And I'm using the small Sony NP batteries. Uh, next one, let's go to the next one. Now remember, you can do everything here with either the dial or you can just touch it, either one. All right, so video aspect, we'll go into there. All right, and you can see how it'll, it'll switch the video aspects that you're re recording with. And we'll just leave it on auto. There goes our center marker, our safety margins. Whoops. You can adjust your safety margins. Okay, our marker mat. Whoops, turn on. Okay, you can do all that. You can switch it around. Of course, you can uh, play with the transparency of your marker mat. Then you have our grid lines. Same thing, rule of thirds, you can play with other ones. Okay, and of course your marker color we can, where we can change uh, our rule of thirds, um, we could have changed those lines to a different color. We'll go to the next one, our LUTs, and this is where we load our LUTs from, from here. Right now I have a BTO709 loaded in, so I could select that if I want. And if I want to manage it, if I have more than one LUT, then I can import or delete it from here. Then I can select the different ones from here. All right, so then our waveforms, if we look at our waveforms, we can see that we can bring them up. And we can bring up all sorts of different ones by sliding up, tapping on the slide map, and we can see we can bring that up. And you have different waveforms that you can choose from. Let's go back to it. Uh, such as Y, YUV, RGB, the histogram, and a vector. You have, you have all that. You have your audio meters that you can turn on. That's right here. here. There's our audio meters. I can turn that off. We can go back up. And of course, if I want everything there, I can just bring up that. And everything's turned on, which is pretty cool. Yeah, everything in one in one shot. All right, let's go. Uh, let's let's turn that off. Go back to it. All waveforms. We'll turn that off. All right, and then here we actually just uh, mess with the actual parameters of the actual screen itself. Screen itself. Color space, brightness, contrast. Let's just do this. Contrast, saturation, hue, sharpness, color temperature, and all that stuff. Um, but I'm fine. It's my, my experience. It's very accurate on, out of the box. Uh, it is a bit of a, a not so bright screen. Um, uh, but as far as the colors and the sharpness, it's a very sharp screen. Uh, it's five point inch, five, five and a half inch. So the 1080p is going to look sharp as heck. All right. Uh, and then we'll go to the next one, sharp this one. And then here we have our function ones where we can actually, um, uh, customize our function keys here on the top whatever is available. You have a language, your volume, volume, your backlight. I have my backlight all the way to max. User settings, if you want specific settings, you can reset and you can also upgrade this with a firmware. So yeah, all right, so that, that's it. And we'll turn around, you can see side there and here, there goes our battery in the back. All right, look at QP pass number one. Did I get the first one off the line? That's cool. And of course you can mount, you can tilt this in whatever direction that you need to, which is really cool and convenient. All right, final thoughts. So those are the basic functions of the GM55. As a monitor, pretty straightforward. Tons of useful options, great build, good aesthetics, plenty of accessories. For my use, I just have four small gripes I have with the monitor. One, it gets really, really hot. So keep that in mind, but so do most monitors. 
but this one made me but this one really made me go like wow it's hot especially on the screen okay number two speaking about the screen i wish the screen was brighter 410 nits is really not that bright it's perfect for indoor use but if you're outside with no shade or a place with really bright lights you're going to definitely need the hood thankfully the hood is easy to use and fold away number three it drains batteries quick like in 30 minutes quick Keep in mind, I'm using the small Sony NP batteries, but usually I have this plugged into the wall. And four, the lack of the camera control cord so we can take advantage of the camera control option. Well, maybe for another video. But overall, I've been using the monitor for about two weeks, and I gotta say, I really like it. I've gotten used to the size and menus and options, and keep in mind, I'm coming from a 7-inch 2200 nit monitor. So, in the end, it really ends up being preference and use but I can easily see myself just leaving this on my camera because my lights are controlled here and I rarely ever shoot outside. So what's my final verdict? Well, if you're in the market to finally get yourself a first monitor, you can't go wrong with the GM55. If you already have experience with monitors, well, maybe the 410 nits may be a letdown for you, but it still has tons of useful features that most high-end monitors have, but it's still totally up to you and your workflow. And for me, it works just fine. Other than that, the 4K compatibility, a beautiful IP display, LED support, battery support, and it comes with HDMI cables, two of them, the GM55 is a good deal at a respectable price of $199. Links down below so you can see other reviews and more details. If you like this video, well then leave a like and leave a comment down below. If you want to see more honest reviews of the products you love, well then subscribe. Until next time, guys, learn, do, and share. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.